Paul's 11 months, you were saying, since the Billy Joe Saunders fight, how are you feeling after that fight? I feel uh, disappointed in my performance on the night, you know, um, felt a little bit rusty, um, you know, just disappointed in general my performance on the night and uh, didn't think I you know, performed the best of my ability at all. You know, I think I learned a lot from the fight. You know. you, was he as good as you expected or, um, or better? Or? Well, I suppose he was about as good as I expected, really. I just made him maybe look that look better than. He's pretty good, he's a good fighter, you know, but uh, yeah, I just don't perform the night a lot. You know, I think uh, if I thought I'd perform my best on that particular night, I might continue to box really, you know. And why didn't you perform on the night, you know? Or? Um, I found out a bit, it was a bit psychologically, it got to me a bit psychologically there, and uh, you know, I learned a few things uh, mentally, and you know, in a good place for the fight, and you know, uh, I was dressed as. Was that the occasion or just in general? It wasn't the occasion, it was just general, general stuff, yeah, kind of outside the ring and, you know, just, uh, that's what it was, to be honest. Do you think that closed the, the door on sort of the British element of things or the, the more domestic over this way that, that you have to go to America now or has America just come about of the blue either way? Um, I wouldn't say it's closed the door domestically, uh, really, and truly, but I, I kind of, and not with Frank Warren, I'm like the dropkick Murphy's yeah. and uh, Murphy's promotion, as I was saying, so uh, that's just something come up and I think, you know, uh, anything would be better at this stage that I get. You know, I couldn't get less fights in America than I have been getting in the UK. I've been getting very little fights in the UK. I've had a couple of like 11 month areas, like this would be my third 11 month area of inactivity, and uh, you know, that's, that's fair for my need. You know, it's not what a boxer wants. You need, you need to be busy, you know. And um, you know, I think Frank Warren's a nice person, you know, chatting and all the rest of it. Nice guy, man, sometimes chatting away, it's fine, but just. Uh, you know, I was a bit unhappy with the inactivity I had, I wasn't getting fights frequently enough, you know. Uh, Do you think he saw you as an opponent for some of his bigger names, or the names that he had invested in, or...? Maybe so, yeah. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but like I said, he gave me opportunities in the start, which he did, like, you know, I got a good record before I came out to him, and I was, I was 13 or something, 13 or 14, you know, I can't remember. He said he gave me the opportunities, which he did. Yeah, I mean, they match you all, but it was the short notice. I don't know whether they expected me to win that one or not. I took it like a three weeks notice. And, yeah, yeah. You know, I've been out of the ring, I think, a couple of a few months before that as well. In a short, maybe, maybe in a rough row, 11 months again prior to the match you all, but I took it on like three weeks notice. I won that fight. I think they thought maybe match you all might have won that one, and then Billy Joe could have beat match you all with the title, but um, it didn't really happen. I beat, went down to beat match you all, and uh, you know, then. Again, before I got the opportunity to defend it, it took 11 months and I was fighting, defending my title against Billy Joe Saunders who had like five fights in that time and uh, you know, in the 11, 11 months I had not been here, like five fights, you know, uh, so I think I wasn't that really happy about that. Well, you've a, a new adventure to look forward to now. Yeah, uh, yeah, Can you tell us about the sort of set up well, what's the deal in America? Or? Well, it's kind of like a trial deal really, um, I got to show them what I got. A good performance. Uh, I find Jose Medina, he's quite a good opponent, you know, he's a good boxer, he's got a bad record, he's been in some good fighters, he's had, had a draw with the world champion, I can't remember that bloke's name. Checking uh, on boxing. Checking on boxing, yeah. Um, yes, I'm just going to have to try and put a good performance on it. It'll be my first time in the ring again in 11 months. I'm training hard, I'm probably training harder than ever, and I'm feeling pretty good and uh, confident I can put a good performance. So you're basically out there to try and catch the eye now? Absolutely, yeah. Does that put a bit of pressure on to put on the shot? Or? I think it puts a bit of added pressure, yeah, definitely. Uh, coming off a loss in my last fight, um, you know, I need to be, you know, the idea that I need to kind of put on a good performance in this fight, you know, to be honest. The one who I want to put on a good performance, I feel. Like, you know. And if you say you, they have. Golden Boy, it's Golden Boy Link, isn't it, with the Dropkick Murphys, and they have Kid Chocolate. Do you think that opens the pathway to Kid Chocolate for you? Because you called him out previously, haven't you? I think so, yeah. I think it's a uh, Kid Chocolate's a fight I, I would like, you know. Um, I need, uh, it's my first fight again, as I say, I go back to uh, my first fight in 11 months. I need to take this one on first to deal with this fight in hand, and uh, maybe have another one or two ahead. And Kid Chocolate's a fight that, uh, you know, down the road, I definitely fancy, you know, I think. It's a fight that fire would suit me. You, you see the like Matthew Macklin calling every kid chocolate? Yeah, I see the like Matthew Macklin calling every kid chocolate, you know, uh, he's a fight I'd like to fight as well. Matthew Macklin, you know, he's a good fighter, he's had three more title fights, so uh, you know, I think uh, he's a guy, you know, I, I think I could beat him as well.
Would you be confident to beat him? I'd be confident they could beat him, yeah. Do you think that make a good eliminator or even... Absolutely, yeah. It could make a good eliminator for um, Kid Chocolate, why not? You know, it would be, be a fight that would sell. A fight that would attract the fans, I would think, you know, um, who could forward fighters, you know, punchers. You know, it would be, uh, be a war. And then just finally, you know, a lot of the talk recently has been about Chris Newbank Jr. Do you think that's still a possible fight? Or um, what's your thoughts on Chris? I know he's kind of been fairly... Well, he's extremely arrogant, you know, he thinks, you know, he's better than what he is. You know, he's kind of living off his, his father's name and, you know, I think he's very scared, you know, he's afraid to even talk to me, you know, and, uh, you know, he's been calling over people and then replying to people back. He's just wondering, uh, I think, the minute like I mentioned, he just starts hiding under his bed covers, like, you know, and, but I think it's a fight of a cell, it's a fight that I would like, you know, uh, connection with Pascal being my trainer and Steve being Pascal's brother and Steve having beat Chris's dad. Mm. Maybe, maybe from Cork where both those fight their place, you know, yeah. And for the, the, the WBO title. WBO right? World Eight, yeah, so uh, yeah. an ideal world um, if I go on and beat Jose Medina in good fashion and have another good win after that and who knows what happened. Maybe get, get chocolate, win the WBO middleweight championship of the world and then uh, I give Chris the first defence. In Cork? In Cork. Whereas dad got beaten in Parky Cueve just down the road from my house, so, uh, you know. We'd all love that. Oh, would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Perfect, thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jenny.